Gott's desert group smash through a light screen of Axis troops. They slip around the German and Italian flank. It's May 15th, 1941, and God achieves complete surprise as Operation Brevity begins. The centre group appear out of nowhere at the Halfaya Pass. 2nd Battalion Scots Guards and a squadron of Matilda tanks from 4th Royal Tank Regiment overrun the Italian positions. The Italians are startled, but manage to knock out 7 Matilda tanks before they're subdued. The Coast Group, a mixed force of mostly infantry and anti-tank units, moves across broken ground towards the Halfaya Pass and engages the enemy. But the Italians fight viciously and manage to hold the British at bay. Much to Gott's displeasure, they hold on for several hours. The British move forwards. Beware and Merced are taken by the centre group, but the Germans at Fort Capuzzo stand their ground. Despite losing contact with their tank support, 1st Battalion Durham Light Infantry attack, and even with a tough defence by the German forces there, Capuzzo falls. Gott's orders are to drive the enemy from Solon and Fort Capuzzo. If this proves successful, he has permission to move towards the brook and possibly relieve the siege. But he must reserve his men for a future operation, an operation that his superior needs to be victorious. For Gott, everything seems to be going okay. The northern end of the Halfaya Pass isn't taken, but otherwise, the attack is proceeding to plan. However, his enemy isn't willing to sit there and let him win. General Erwin Rommel has a man on the ground that he can rely on to stop God. Perth, German colonel, now goes head to head with God. Perth reacts by withdrawing from Capuzzo towards Bardia. During this move, he's hit on the flank by fire coming from 7th Armour Brigade, part of the desert. German recon units shatter the 7th Armour Brigade, thinking the cruiser tanks and the heavily armoured Matildas. Perth considers a flanking move, but instead decides to stay where he is and resist the British attacks. Under pressure though, Perth sends a report back to his commander, exaggerating the strain that his forces are under. Rommel sees this attack as the beginning of the British attempt to relieve Tobruk and reacts accordingly. He shores up Axis forces into Tobruk siege, then promises Perth that vital reinforcements are on their way. With said promise, Rommel orders Herf to attack now. The Coast Group finally take the Hellfire Pass, collecting 124 prisoners from their enemy. But for the British, nine tanks have been lost so far, and in their weakened state, the Centre Group isn't able to push beyond Capuzzo. With his orders to counterattack, Herf sends 2nd Battalion of the 5th. Panzer Regiment to Fort Capuzzo, and 1st Battalion Durham Light Infantry take heavy losses from German Panzer counterattacks there. Gott orders the desert group near City Azais to relieve the pressure on the Durhams defending Fort Capuzzo, and in what proves to be a serious reverse, 2nd Royal Tank Regiment takes hits from Hearst Panzers. Unable to delay her for long, they're forced to pull back to City Salina. As a consequence of this major failure, the Durhams are driven back to Merced, and Fort Capuzzo once again falls into Axis hands. Worse, Gott receives word from Bletchley Park stating that Rommel has ordered a counterattack and realises that the centre group is sat on exposed ground. Gott considers the possibility of withdrawal, but feels like he doesn't have the authority to make that decision. So at 2100 hours, he sends a request to his superior, General Breston Pierce, at the Western Desert Force headquarters, asking him what he should do. Gott considers the situation. He knows that if he keeps the centre group where it is, it won't be able to resist a determined German counterattack. But if he withdraws, it would leave the desert group alone to fight the Germans. It's his first independent command as a brigadier, and he doesn't want to fail. Brevity is meant to be a raid. His orders are to preserve his forces, and he knows the centre group no longer has the strength to fight the Germans. It's a tough decision, and without orders, just before 0200 hours on May 16th, Gott decides to withdraw the centre group to the top of the Halfaya Pass. Then, at 0245 hours, Breastwood Pierce finally replies and orders Gott to hold his positions. 
The general wants time to examine aerial photographs of the situation before making a decision. It's unclear whether he knows about Bletchley Park's information regarding Rommel's counterattack, but what is clear is that Brest with Pierce is too late. Got centre group is already withdrawing. With the withdrawal of the centre group from Herve's southern flank, Herve now has a choice as well. He is free to move against either the centre group or 7th Armoured Brigade and the rest of the desert group. It was then, at 0300 hours, that the reinforcements from Tobruk arrive. Camp Group Kramer comes to a halt near City as is, and their presence places 7th Armoured Brigade in a precarious situation between Herve's 2nd Panzer Battalion and Kramer's 5th Panzer Battalion. Camp Group Kramer slips around the British and reaches Fort Capuzzo at 6.30am, and at 8 o'clock he makes contact with Herve. With these vital reinforcements, Herve hopes that with their powers combined, the two camp group can pull all the British into submission. Gott holds the desert group at City as eyes and scouts the German positions. The Germans don't come forward for most of the day and Gott can't understand why the Germans won't attack, but Herve knows the exact reason. The issue is both camp group have stopped dead in their tracks because of a lack of fuel. To quote Butler, had Gott known of this and immediately ordered an attack by the 7th Armed Brigade and 22nd Dragoon Guards, he could have destroyed almost half the Africa Corps' tank strength. As it was, none of his reconnaissance units defined the reason for von Herf's and Kramer's immobility and the opportunity passed. Herf and Kramer are finally able to move at around 4pm and engage the desert. 5th Panzer Battalion fights a company of cruiser tanks from the 7th Armed Brigade, with both groups repelling each other and then withdrawing. Gott now sees how exposed 7th Armoured Brigade is in the middle of the desert and orders the brigade to fall back as well. Delaying Herve's advance until dark on the 16th, 7th Armoured Brigade withdraws back to their starting point. Having stopped the British attacks, the Germans halt on the line from Sidi Omar, Sidi Suleiman and Solon. They've lost the Halfaya Pass to the British, but well, that is all. British casualties are heavier than the Germans. The Durham Light Infantry lose 160 casualties alone. British tank losses amount to 5 Matilda tanks, 13 cruisers damaged and destroyed, while the Germans record 12 killed, 61 wounded, 185 missing and 3 Panzers destroyed. While Italian casualty records for this battle were subsequently lost, the British claimed to have taken about 350 Italian prisoners, which wasn't an unrealistic figure considering what happened during Operation Compass a few months earlier. Brevity is over. A short engagement, but an important one in the history of the Western Desert Campaign. Or is it? Most historians conclude that brevity is a failure and not that important.